Are you happy with your life right now? Yes. Yes, more than no. I mean, I like a lot of different kinds of subject matter and expressions from within music or art, some that are like metaphorical um, or where, you know, as a person telling a story where maybe it's personal in the sense that they're creating it, but it's not anything that's pointing towards their life. Um, so there's like a kind of a veil there, a, a wall of kind of safety. And, um, and I understand that. And it's not that I'm impervious to any kind of fear or anxiety around putting myself out there. But um, art that gets me really excited often is personal. It's people that are being personal and writing about things that are close to them. And whether it's done poetically or plainly, <clears throat> how that affects me depends on the artist. But um, that's the stuff that gets me excited because I feel like it touches to the core of something that really we're already all doing, which is living within our own skins and struggling. And there's sometimes not, the world doesn't give permission uh, to be necessarily authentic with those things. There's a lot of appearances, especially with social media, keeping up appearances. But that isn't the real, actual, under the surface thing that everyone's actually living in. And so it's not for me to say for anyone else <laughs> how they should interface with this, whatever you want to call it. But for me, I feel like if I'm digging into my own life, that I can be something like, touch on something like the authentic nature of music that really touches me. I don't consider it confrontation so much. Um, maybe invitation you know um, for some people they might see it as a confrontation if they're if that kind of stuff makes them uncomfortable but then we're not for them and that's okay I think somewhere along the line we were taught that we're supposed to stuff it all down and certainly in in a you know if you're in a moment like in a car wreck something primordial kicks in and you deal with the situation. It's not like you can spend your whole life being afraid of car wrecks and have a phobia and drive weird and, and whatever, but when the actual thing happens, that kind of mental fear isn't the thing. You know, you're dealing with the situation. You're dealing with the actual life reality. And, um, and that's no longer this kind of mental jargon. And so... Um, to the best of my ability, I just prefer to interface with that than with being caught in my head. And it's hard enough to not be caught up in your head. It's just just messages of every kind of way of what to think, how to feel, how to be, how to express yourself, how not to express yourself. And it changes with the decades. <laughs> what's okay and what's not okay. But yet this root sense of, of self and this kind of vitality of emotion and feeling that that I mean they poets have been writing about that for centuries <clears throat> so that's I don't think it's any different today than it was 5,000 years ago 10,000 years ago whatever you know it's just the way that we interface in our technological world and our <clears throat> civilization um, changes how we interface with it it's like if we all just dropped off the planet all of our books would be food or not food, you know, to life. So it's like, and I am a big fan of many things that we create, and, and I enjoy those things, but I think sometimes it's good to know what they are and what they're not, too. You know, that we control them. They don't have to control us. And even if that's an individual choice. I think a lot of people are disillusioned, but... You know, once again, it's not for me to say what other people are thinking or feeling. I just speak for myself, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like clothes that are too tight, you know, and you try to find something that fits, you know, and, and that's, I think, a challenge. Philosophy and, and 
talking about this stuff, it gets tricky because it's like dissecting a frog. Like you can dissect it and look at all the working parts, but the frog dies. Yes, exactly. I think for most people, whatever their their life practices, you know, whether it be Christianity on one side, let's say, or you know, hardcore, you know, darkness on the other side, that there is this kind of sense of of wanting to be empowered, wanting to know your place in the world, wanting to have strength, sometimes strength in numbers or personal power. And um, and to me, those are positive things. You know, that's, that's the traits of, of things in the wild too. You know, the strength of survival, you know, the strength of, that's right. And so to me, it's like, for the most part, I think that's what beings want. And it, you know, and we're just, we live in saccharine jaded times. So everything can be look at like Disney or like, like greeting cards, you know, like it's like, it's hollow. It's something that's on this cover, but you open it up and there's just a little thing in there and, and you have to add something to it to make it personal. But even then it still feels like impersonal. And there's so much that's like that, that's fed to us. But, um, but I'm not talking about that kind of positivity. You know, it's a different kind. It's the survivorship. It's 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 not just knowing one a place in the world, but also knowing what you don't know. Like just all these words are really just tools. You know, language is a tool. You know, but naming a tree, a tree, that's for us. It's not for it. It's this whole thing that we don't know what it is we don't know what it is you know it's science will dissect it we come up with all sorts of words to then describe the words and then describe the thing that we perceive with our particular human eyes that you know it's our we're we're describing ourselves we're not describing it we don't know what it is and so you can dissect your personal universe accordingly you know a person can and part of that can be kind of maddening too but to me, just living in the world of ideas and hardened ideologies is madness, too. There's a madness to that. And how do you cope with that? Breathe in, breathe out, fuck up, make mistakes, get angry, apologize. Um, just like occasionally it. say things I regret, occasionally do things I regret. I mean, you know, what can you do, you know? I mean, within it, you know, we, we, the situation we find ourselves in is a trip. So to me, the positivity part is like, okay, well, that's a, it's a, it's a choice. And, but it doesn't mean that, um, it's not a dual sense of it, you know, where it, it's like negating an entire part of experience because that's trying to negate those things that are part of our lives becomes like a, like a, a hardened view that that actual reality doesn't support. since I was 12 um, and I know that metal and punk to say it like that sounds kind of simplistic but you know I think there's you know unless you're you know, it sounds like an old man talking but like unless you're older you, you don't most people don't remember a time when that's it was that simple you know there was hardcore punk and there was metal and there's maybe speed metal or but there wasn't death metal yet there wasn't black metal yet I mean I did buy the first Bathory album when it came out, and that was my first exposure to this new, just gnarly, nasty sound. And so I've been steeped in this for a long time and buying black metal, death metal, all the various kind of offshoots as these things were developing. So it's, it's a part of my DNA. And so when I'm writing certain things and trying to express certain kinds of emotions or, or a sense of like 
of thrust energetically. A song like the Scream and those fast gallop chugs, you know, the rapid fire chugs, express something that um, that just fit the record. happened was I was in the emergency room and uh, something had radically shifted in my body and my pain went off the scale and I lost myself. So this whole DMT like trip that I'm talking about, that was before medication. I was completely kicked out of my body. I was no longer in the room. I was not a person. I wasn't a name. I didn't have uh, kids. I wasn't a band. I wasn't a male. I wasn't Anything about me was gone, um, and I was just a vast sea of color, and it was like infinite, but at the same time really up close and personal. Like there was no distance, even though it seemed like it was everywhere, and um, and there was a, just an overarching just kind of awareness, no different than this awareness except for all the DMT crazy stuff that was going on in my body. And um, there's no control in it whatsoever. Um, I did have a moment where I recognized, like, the I, like the really substratum thing that's not a personality, that's not, it wasn't somebody that was born at a certain date and it wasn't going to die a certain date, just this thing. There was, a, like, a recognition. But... That's only in retrospect that I can see that. Um, at the time, it was, I, you know, there's no fear, there's no pain, there's no nothing. I could have been and was dying. And uh, I had no zero anxiety. It just was a, a thing. And when they gave me medication, because that's what was happening, and I, I, I was like, off to the side of my body. I wasn't like over, hovering over it, but I was to the side of it. It was like the sense of being like over here. And so I had a slight awareness of my body, but, uh, but the scene in the room was very different than what I was experiencing. And they were like, okay, he's, you know, I was a mess. And so they were giving me pain meds to deal with my obvious pain that my body was going through. And that's what brought me back into my body. Um, and, uh, and then the pain just erupted from zero to a hundred, you know, it just went in from nothing to everything. And, uh, it took them, uh, a hundred cc's of Dilaudid to get it to go down in two different doses. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for uh, putting up with my rhetoric. I don't usually get that talky about it, but you know, I appreciate it.